Good morning, good morning. The time for convening has arrived. The Senate will come to order. At this time, I'll ask all unauthorized personnel to exit the chamber. I recognize the Senator from the 28th. Reading of the journal. Thank you, Mr. President. The Senate met pursuant to adjournment at 9 a.m. today and was called to order by the President. Senator Brass of the 28th, me, reported that the journal the previous legislative day had been read and found to be correct. By unanimous consent, the reading of the journal was dispensed with. The journal was confirmed. The following committee report was read by the secretary. Would you like me to cover the rest of this? It is your role, but you can, you can do whatever you want to, Senator. Well, I've already read it, but I was going to read it to everybody else since we didn't have a whole lot else going on. But you know what? This journal is no read. If there's no objection to the confirming of the journal, then I think we'll be all right, Senator. There's objection. Well, continue reading, sir. The following committee report was read by the secretary. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on State and Local Government Operations has had under consideration the following legislation and what has instructed me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. You want to keep going? HB 2EX, do pass. HB 3X, do pass. HB 4 EX, do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Ginn of the 47th District, Chairman. Senator Albers of the 56th asked unanimous consent that Senator Harbin of the 16th be excused. The consent was granted, comma, and Senator Harbin was excused, <laughs> period. Senator Albers of the 56th asked unanimous consent that Senator Hatchett of the 50th be excused. Period. The consent was granted, comma, and Senator Hatchett was excused. Period. Hold on one second, Senator. I think the majority of the leader has a has a motion here. Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Isn't it true that last year's rules chairman had all this memorized and we didn't have to read it? So yeah, therefore, I would well, say we should you know, suspend. Sometimes, sometimes you trade in for less. You know. Thank but, you, sir. Well, he. <laughs> He had more places but, but to I'm, store all I, but that knowledge. You're, I'm open for a, for a motion to move. I would move that we suspense with the reading of the journal. Okay. All right. You second. second. All right. We got a motion, the second, and the dispensing of the reading of the journal. Or we can continue to listen to the good senator from Coweta County read 200 more pages of uh, of the journal here. So all those in favor of signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. No. Eyes clearly have it. So, Senator, you did a wonderful job. Is there objection to confirmation of the journal? Chair hears none, and the journal is confirmed. All senators who have bills and resolutions to introduce, please bring them to the secretary's desk. Secretary, no further. All right. All right. It is now time for the morning roll call. Are there any motions to excuse? I think we have a motion from the majority leader, maybe? Yes, sir. I, to make up for the lost time we had from the rules chairman, I move that we suspend the roll call this morning. And the majority leader has moved we suspend roll call. Is there any objection? Without objection, we will suspend roll call. It is now time for our morning devotion. If all the senators take their seat and the doorkeeper will secure the doors, we will, I will recognize the good senator from the 39th to introduce our pastor of the day. Good morning. Let's first do the Pledge of Allegiance, if you will, with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the Georgia flag. I pledge allegiance to the Georgia flag and to the principles for which it stands, wisdom, justice, moderation, and courage. 
Good morning, distinguished members of the Senate. It is with great pleasure and respect that I introduce Pastor Kevin Early, a cherished leader and the spiritual shepherd of Community Church in Southwest Atlanta. Pastor Early's journey has been one defined by unwavering faith, tireless dedication to service, and a profound commitment to fostering compassion and understanding. A native of Chicago, Pastor Early spent 17 years as a pastor in Detroit, where he also served as police chaplain, an experience which made him an integral part of the fabric of that community for many years. And it's also an experience which he treasured and is working to replicate here in Atlanta as a fire chaplain assigned to a battalion. He and his family have been in Atlanta for just three years, but his commitment to community outreach fits perfectly with the church's mission to pastor the community. His role at Community Church and the Vickers Community Center extends far beyond the pulpit as he tirelessly works to uplift and support individuals from all walks of life. Notably, his church is in the final stages of becoming a resiliency center a place where people can gather during a blackout to get cool or warm up or just to charge their phone. If you were to attend a service at his church on any given Sunday, you would feel right at home with the other 125 people or so sitting in the pews next to you. Yet do not underestimate the impact that this church family is making every week. Under the pastor's leadership, their food pantry has grown eightfold feeding 400 families each week, amounting to 10,000 households year to date just in 2023. Whether advocating for the less fortunate, providing solace in times of crisis, or simply lending a compassionate ear and a calming voice, Pastor Early exemplifies the fortitude of the best faith leaders. He is a husband and father of three. It's a very busy life in his family with three teenagers including a son who was just 10 months older than his twin siblings. He's got a 15-year-old and two 14-year-olds. He is, um, he's got a management degree from Illinois State University. He earned his Master of Divinity and Doctor of Ministry degree at Anderson University and currently serves as the chaplain for the Concerned Black Clergy of Metropolitan Atlanta and as Vice President of the Cascade Area Neighborhood Organization. Please join me in welcoming our Chaplain of the Day, Pastor Kevin Early. Thank you. Thank you, Senator uh, Halpern, and uh, to our Lieutenant uh, Governor, as well as all of you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to uh, stand before you uh, today. <clears throat> I'd like to share <clears throat> a brief scripture with you, a portion of a scripture, Ecclesiastes. Uh, chapter 4, verse 9, simply says, two are better than one. One of the most positive, rewarding, exhilarating, encouraging, exciting, refreshing, helpful blessings in life is dealing with people hanging with humans. I imagine most of you can think of someone, a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, a husband, wife, spouse, uh, someone who has come through in the clutch, someone who has encouraged you, someone who has made your day and your life better. One of the most positive, rewarding, exhilarating, encouraging, helpful blessings in life is dealing with people hanging with humans. That said, one of the most aggravating, disturbing, annoying, bothersome, headache-causing experiences, experiences in life is dealing with people hanging with humans. Uh, while relationships can be a, both a blessing and uh, a burden, at the end of the day, it's been said that relationships are the coin and currency of life. It's relationships with people that is one of the most ultimate blessings and treasures that we experience as human beings. Uh, I emphasize relationships with other people. Well, I'm not prepared to come today and tell you what, what the Lord will not do. I did show up to tell you what the Lord likely won't do. Uh, the Lord, uh, God of the universe, is not going to uh, physically give you a hug, physically hug you, kiss you on the cheek, literally pass you, pat, pat you on the back, 
You need a human for that. The Lord is not going to talk with you, argue with you, fight, and then make up with you. You need a human for that. The Lord is not going to play phase 10, checkers, or uno with you. You need a human to do that. The uh, Lord is not going to go to you, uh, go take you to dinner and a movie. You need a person to do that with. The Lord is not going to hold your hand while you're birthing a child or help you um, proof a presentation that you have to give the next morning. You need a person to do that. Again, won't tell you what the Lord can't do, but I tell you what he won't do. He, he won't look you in the eye and tell you, I love you. He won't look you in the eye and say, I've been worried about you. He'll look you in the eye and say, uh, at least on this side of heaven, good job. You need a person to do that. That said, please understand, one again, one of the biggest blessings in life is the relationships that we have with other people. Regardless of race, ethnicity, social economic status, we all have various needs for acceptance, affection, appreciation, approval, attention, comfort, encouragement, respect, security, and support. Watch this from other people. Even an, even an introvert will have some degree uh, of a need to connect with other people. Uh, understand it's impossible for us to meet our own relational needs. Uh, after a hard day at work, uh, a difficult day in these chambers, you can't wrap your, uh, you, you can't hug yourself and say, I'm sorry that the day has not been that well. You need a person to do that. A person doesn't have the ability, uh, uh, not, not only that, uh, in order for someone to be helpful to you, they don't have to uh, have more than you, a better education than you, uh, or even your status in order to be helpful to you. Uh, get this, a person can have less than you have, no less than you do, and still help you fulfill your goal and give you a better life. Uh, if, I, if, if you need $100 and you only have 93, you don't need someone uh, that has more money than you. You just need someone that has three more dollars and they can help you get to the place that you need. Our relational neediness also en encourages us to have compassion and interdependence. Since I have a need to, for, uh, to be helped for, uh, from other people, and since you have a need to be helped uh, from other people, we, it can motivate us to, uh, to take care of the needs of one another. We need each other. We need other, other people. So we might as well work together to make this life as best as we can. Uh, let me try this 1980 style. Making your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? All those nights when you've got no lights, the check is in the mail, and your little angel hung the cat up by its tail, and the third fiance didn't show. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name, and they're always glad you came. You want to go where people can see trouble are all the same. You want to go where everyone knows your name. Uh, Although relationships can be a burden, they are certainly more of a blessing when you weigh them back and forth. And our God is so good, he has, put, uh, he has put and will put people in your life to be a blessing to you and for you to be a blessing to them. So thank the Lord for your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your family, your friends, uh, your college uh, roommates that you still keep in contact with. Uh, when you look at them, when you call them on the phone, when you simply text them an emoji, you should, t you should uh, from time to time, pause and whisper a prayer saying, Lord, thank you for sending them into my life. When they send you a birthday card, when they come over to your house, when they email you or uh, message you uh, on, uh, on Facebook, it's a time to whisper a prayer and say, Lord, you made a way for my relational needs to be met. Put another way, the Lord may not physically give you a hug or physically kiss you on the cheek. He may not literally pat you on the back and say it's a good job, but he has blessed each and every one of us with people who can do so. And so during this Christmas and this, this holiday season, I encourage you, uh, even um, as you are navigating your way through uh, incredibly um, important responsibilities as legislators, remember that you need other people. Remember that your family, uh, they, they need you. There are things that only you can do uh, for your family and towards your friends. Uh, remember the power of your presence. 
remember the largeness of listening. Two are better than one. Let us pray. Father, I thank you that you are uh, the God who meets all of our needs, and that you understood that uh, two are better than one, that it's not good for any of us to live alone. And so I'm, I'm thankful for all of the relationships that you have given us, uh, those who sit in this room, uh, those who stand. I pray, Lord, that you will uh, continue to bless us with people, that you will let, and that you will allow us to be a blessing to others. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you.
<laughs> Are there any unanimous consents? Does any senator wish to rise on a point of personal privilege? I recognize the senator from the 32nd for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm here this morning to give a shout out to somebody from Banks County, not my county, represented by the senator from the 50th. But you may remember last year we passed a bill called uh, Senate Bill 155 that cleaned up our canine statute. And um, just last week there was an episode that really demonstrated the value of our canine officers in which a canine officer in Banks County found four suspects in less than 15 minutes after a stolen vehicle chase. So I'm gonna read you this little short article. Recently, canine Becca, Banks County canine Becca and her partner, Corporal Josh Presley, were called to help find five suspects who ran after a stolen vehicle chase. They were reportedly last spotted running into an overgrown field toward the interstate. Multiple agencies responded, including Jefferson Police Department, Jackson County Sheriff's Office and the Georgia State Patrol. They formed a perimeter. Presley used four separate scent kits at the scene to get scent articles from the vehicle. The duo began trailing through an open field and found a red shoe lost by one of the suspects. The first suspect was found lying on the ground wearing one red shoe. The second and third suspects were found in the field. The fourth suspect was located five feet away on the edge of the field. The fifth suspect escaped to the exit ramp and was found near the interstate and was arrested. Authorities said the trail to locate the suspects took only 15 minutes from the deployment time. According to the Banks County Sheriff's Office, last year Presley and K-9 Becca received the Scent Evidence K-9 Master Handler Certificate for outstanding K-9 trailing search deployments. And in the last 18 months, they've completed 20 tracks to locate missing people and criminals. The duo is ranked third in the nation for canine fines. We're really proud of them and uh, wanted to just thank the officer and his canine partner. And I think this just highlights the importance of our canine officers in not only locating criminals, but also missing persons. Thank you very much. With that, Mr. President, I yield the well. Thank you, Senator, and thank you for letting us know about the good work they're doing in Banks County. Does any other senator wish to rise on a point of personal privilege? The floor is open. The cameras are rolling. <laughs> Nobody wants to rise on a point of personal privilege. No? I wish, I wish, I wish the senator from the 35th. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I uh, would like to give honor to uh, and condolences to um, Mr. Herman Riley, uh, who passed away almost three weeks ago now. And his wife was Senator Diana Harvey Johnson, who served over 20 something years here in the legislature. And uh, also she was the president of the Black Caucus on two different terms and she actually got married while she was here before she left the Senate. So uh, Mr. Riley was a colonel, a retired colonel, and uh, he lived in, they lived in Savannah, Georgia. So I wanna give, uh, ask everyone to, to uh, remember her in, in their prayers because it's a tough time for her at this time and we honor Mr. Herman Riley. Thank you. Mr. Irwin, Col Her Colonel Irwin Riley? Uh, Herman. Herman, Herman Riley, Riley. Okay. yes. Well, thank you for letting us know that, Senator. Thank Definitely you. our condolences go out to that family. Thank you. Thank you very much for letting us know that. Any other Senator wish to rise on point of personal privilege? Hearing none, I recognize the, oh, I'm sorry, Senator Brass, oh, excuse me, Senator from the 28th.
It was just brought to my attention that today is uh, National Father's Day in one of my favorite countries, Thailand. No, Taiwan, sorry. So happy Father's Day to all the fathers in Taiwan. I was just there visiting with many of them a few months ago, and it's a beautiful country. So Taiwan song. Thank you, Senator. Senator from 33rd. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to talk about coffee this morning. When I was in the Air Force, I used to make coffee every morning for the commanders and the generals. Would you like cream and sugar with that, sir? A very good choice. I even went to etiquette school to do that. The only difference between doing that and now is each morning I make coffee for the senator from the 35th and I don't even drink coffee. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, if there's no other points of personal privilege, I will recognize the majority leader for a motion. Thank you, sir. I move that the Senate stand adjourned until 10 a.m. Thursday, December the 7th. The majority leader has moved. Are there objections to this motion? Hearing no objections, all those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes clearly have it. We are adjourned to, until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, Thursday, December 7th. Thank you.